Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Listen, glad to have you guys here. Today is the 21st a Tuesday of April 2020. And you know what? There's no arguing the fact that all the gov governments on Earth just now in a unified effort, acted in a totalitarian way by imposing lockdowns on all their people. And where does totalitarianism originate? What country? China, the CCP, the Chinese, Centr uh, the Chinese Party. That's where totalitarianism originates. That's the source of it. And this was the source of it all. It all come from there. You know, and it spread out over the whole earth like a plague. Now, I'm not going to argue whether it was a good thing or it was a bad thing. And they may have saved a lot of lives by the lockdowns. But there's no arguing it was totalitarianism. They didn't give the people a choice in the matter. And fundamentally, to lock somebody in their own house... Is, is a human rights violation. It, I mean, it's, I don't see it as anything else, but because it's, it's like, it's what they would do to a prisoner. If you said, you, you, they call that house arrest when they do it to a prisoner, to a person, you know? Now, I'm not gonna argue whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know. In the long run, we'll find out, I guess, as history passes, we'll look back in retrospect and we'll be able to decide just how many lives it saved or whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. But it is totalitarianism. You know? And the, another thing I want to talk about, I've got a tremendous track record on my channel. And going back, if you've been watching my show for a long time, I predict an awful lot of these events that are unfolding right now in real time. Things like gold and silver shortages of supply, uh, a deflationary spike event I've been on my channel talking about. We're right in the middle of this deflationary spike event right now, guys. And this is why oil prices have dropped down to nothing. And I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I wish I was exaggerating when I say oil prices have dropped down to nothing, but they've dropped below nothing. This is un unbelievable, you know? And, and now... They're talking about supporting the oil industry in the United States. What are they going to do? Just run it? Uh, well, you know, this monetary policy is totalitarianism, too. They just create as much money as they want. This is totalitarian, to create as much money as you want in a monetary system. To, to go out and support all your buddies within the monetary system just by printing as much money as you want is totalitarianism because our savings are all linked to this. They're destroying our savings when they print all this money. And they do it in a totalitarian... They don't ask. They just do it. You, you read in the newspaper the next day and they've done it. They, they've made another five billion or five trillion or whatever amount they want and they pass it out to all their buddies and make all their buddies rich. And what do they do? They give the American people a token. Because I'm going to tell you the amount of money that they're creating right now, those checks that you get are just a token. Just a token compared to the amount of money that they're creating. And this, what this does is it erodes all of your savings, all of your retirement. Do you care about your retirement? Do you care about the next, what's going to happen to you in the next 30 or 40 years? Because they're destroying it. They're tearing it out from underneath you. This is totalitarianism. To do things just without asking. To take ultimate power over all the people and, and, and completely, basically destroy their lives, inch by inch, to destroy the middle class. What else can you call it? And where is the source for totalitarianism? China. That's the source where all of this is coming from. The flu, too. You know? And so it's no wonder the way I feel about China right now. I feel resentment as to what they're doing to the world. Yeah, we were in a little bit of a, of a, a push and pull with them, a little bit of a, a war with them. It was a trade war, you know? And they wanted to get back at us really bad. 
because we were getting the better of them. I just don't know what all of this and, and the whole thing is now erupted. But listen, I'm going to forecast out into the future a little bit here for you guys. October, watch October of this year. Maybe September, in around that area. Watch in around that area. Uh, we're not going to see a, a, a V-shaped recovery, but we are going to see a recovery. And why I'm saying to watch that area is, this is when gold and silver prices are going to pop. And this is when the people that are putting their faith in the dollar, right now, as a safe haven asset, are going to pay. They're going to pay in around that time of the year coming up. So be warned out there. And you're hearing it from me. You're hearing it from me first. You guys that are putting all your faith in the dollar as a safe haven asset, you're going to take a real beating come around, uh, probably around September or October of this year. Now, I'm on top of stuff. I'm sitting here, I'm watching everything like a hawk, doing my research. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, why is he saying September or October? It's all got to do with timing, guys, and this virus. Everything's got to do with this virus around the, around the economy and the timing. I'm watching this virus very carefully. I'm watching its progression. And when the recovery comes, you know, an awful lot of these small-time oil producers and stuff, they're just not going to make it. Because when the government supports the oil industry in the United States, which is coming up very soon, that's next, by the way. And they're already, I know they're already in there supporting it. You think it's any by any chance it's like $1 or $2 for the oil price right now? Up above plus? When it went down, boom, all the way down to like minus 37? It's not by chance. They're supporting it, but they're just keeping it just above, just above the, the negative mark. You can see their hand in there if you look at the charts. I'm going to show them to you in a minute. Okay, but why I'm saying around September or October is the virus is going to start to wane back then. The economy is going to start to heat up. Demand for oil is going to increase. Supply is, those. you know how quick those tanks, they just filled and they get no place else to put it. An inventory build can disappear when that happens. And then you need to have new production. And new, all that production is going to be offline. It's going to go offline during the summer. Tremendous amount of oil production is going to go offline during the summer. They're only going to support the real big guys, and they're just going to pocket that money. You know, this is what's coming. And and so when this little bit of a recovery starts to come in the oil price and stuff, you watch the gold and silver price really start to heat up because it's been waiting for this for a long time. And you're going to see the dollar start to finally lose steam. In around that time of year, you know. And so, you know, that recovery, even though it's not going to be, we're not going to go up to where we were before the crisis started, but we're going to make a recovery. It's not going to be an L-shaped thing where we go along like we are now or worse. We're going to start to make a recovery. It's going to be late in the summer. It's going to start slowly, but it's going to pick up intensity really fast toward the fall. As this disease gets in, in the back mirror, it's gone, you know, it's starting to, as we're driving on by it, you know, uh, and, and, and this is what's coming. Anyway, let's get the charts open. Let's take a look at the markets today. Let's start the charts right here. And, uh, okay, uh, silver price today. Uh, silver's taken an awful beating in, in the spot price. And it hasn't went down very much on the uh, actual uh, physical. If you're going to buy physical, the price hasn't went down very much. Taking an awful beating on the spot price, so. Uh, 1473 today. It's down 51 cents. Gold today. 1685. It's down $10.80 today. Uh, it's bounced back. Gold's bounced back or starting to bounce back just a little bit today so far. Let's take a look at crypto. Crypto, 198 billion. Bitcoin dominance, 63.6%. And we're seeing the price was falling. 
it seems like there's a floor in in Bitcoin around sixty five hundred dollars. There's a real solid floor there. That's a real solid floor. I think we're getting down toward toward the uh, period where we're going to have a little bit. I think we're going to have a little bit of a resurgence in this virus, or what they call a second wave. Now, you know, I'm going to tell you, we would have only had one wave with this virus if they hadn't have done all the lockdowns, but it would have been one monster of a wave, and it would have overwhelmed the healthcare system. But we would have had one wave, and we would have got over it quicker. Uh, what they've done is they've made it so now we're going to have two waves or three waves of the virus. First wave has already went through. We're getting ready to go. We're going to go into the second wave, you know. And we might have a third smaller wave with this virus. And it, this is going to be a bad summer because of this, you know. It's going to be a summer where uh, this thing, it's come from China and it's really messed us up. Really, it's really, you know, it's it's a nasty little virus. It's it's not like it's not like the flu. It's much, much, much worse than the flu, and it lasts an awful lot longer. For the people that catch it, they get relapses and everything else. You know, uh, it takes a long time for them to get over it, and then they start to get sick again, and they keep fighting it for months. You know, and we don't know what the long term effects of this is, even for the people who have it only very mildly. And then they seemingly get over it. We don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna get sick later. Uh, maybe symptoms. We don't know what might happen later. Like down the line, maybe they'll develop fibromyalgia really bad. These people, you know. And there's gonna be millions of them, millions, tens of millions of them. And they might develop symptoms like later, like after the virus is gone, they might develop symptoms like fibromyalgia and not be able to get out of bed. They might develop symptoms like chronic fatigue. Uh, they might they might have organ damage, maybe kidney damage. Gosh knows. We we've never done long term studies on the on the on the after effects of this virus. Let's just hope that there isn't any, but we don't know for sure. You know, and for people out there who say, "Hey, this is just the flu." No, this isn't the flu. This thing is systematically taking down the world economy. If it was the flu, it wouldn't be doing that. China was frightened of it. They knew what it was. They knew what it was when it first came out. They did those big, giant, totalitarian lockdowns and everything else, and they, they stomped it out. Uh, I'm telling you, what a situation we're in. But it's playing itself out in real time. Anyway... Don't know how I got talking about that. I'm talking about cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is trying to find a bottom. Doesn't want to go below 6,500 for Bitcoin. We're at 68.72 today, right now at this minute. And uh, you know, I'll tell you, cryptocurrency has really done well through this crisis. Surprise, really surprising. Uh, they they really don't want to let go of their cryptocurrency. The people that are holding it, HODLing it, they don't want to let go of it. And some of the, I mean, it's done just as good as gold and silver, really, when you consider it. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average right now. And, you know, it's taking a little bit of a wallop today, but this is expected. It's going to, it's going to, I think it's going to test its lows. It's, what is its lows, around 18,000? I think it's going to test those lows again. Because we're coming in for a second wave of this virus, you know. Uh, I don't think this market's really going to pick up and really gather strength until uh, until this fall, when we get the virus in the rearview mirror. But that's when oil demand's going to go up again, and there's going to be a lack of supply, and they're going to empty those tanks that are all overflow and overfill right now. Those tanks are filled right up to the brim, and there's nowhere else to put it. You know, and that's why the price is staying down low right now is because they got nowhere else to put it and demand's very low, very weak, almost non-existent demand. And still the pumps are continuing to pump, you know. They don't want to shut off production. And, uh, you know, what's going to happen is, is these small-time oil producers are all going to go out of business, a lot of them, while the government supports the big guys. And when things come back online again, they're going to they're sent their employees all home, uh, send them off with uh, 
with, uh, you know, and they're going to have closed and capped off the wells and everything else. It takes them quite a little while to get back to back up to speed again, but the demand's going to come back in quicker this fall. I'm talking about probably September, you know, or October. The demand's going to come back quicker than they can support it within with the, uh, and they're going to drain those wells that are all full, right? You know, those great big tanks and stuff where they store the oil. They're going to drain them down quicker than they can bring new oil in. And uh, the price is going to shoot up faster than you've ever seen it shoot up before in your life for oil, you know. But uh, right now it's down 508 points down on the stock market, 23,142. Let's take a look at oil right now. Uh, $3.89. So it is bouncing back a little bit in price. Uh I never saw I'd see the day with three dollar and eighty nine cent a barrel oil. <laughs> okay, U.S. Treasuries today. We're looking at Treasury yields falling all the way across the yield curve. Uh, we're looking at a, a one point one four on the U.S. thirty year. Ten years at point five five for for a ten year Treasury. You're only going to get one half of one percent of interest on the ten years for ten years. You know, and still they're buying them. They're going in there, and I mean, uh, uh, it's considered to be the premier safe haven asset. You know what the premier safe haven asset is? Gold. Gold's the premium safe haven asset of the world, you know. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. 100.26 on the U.S. dollar index today. Uh, look at this. Central banks have pumped an uh, annualized $23.4 trillion into the financial system. So they're pumping out money on one end like it's no, like there's no tomorrow. Uh, the deflation is sucking it up on the other end, you know. Uh, so it's balancing it out right now. But they can't pull back stimulus measures once they start them. This has been proven. Markets will collapse if they try to pull back. And so they got the pedal to the metal. They're pumping that gas out there, that money out there, that liquidity out there like there's no tomorrow. Uh, when this crisis starts to end, they're going to have to keep pumping it out like there's no tomorrow. And we all know what's going to be the end result of all that, you know, is inflation. So as long as we got the deflation going, there's no real inflation yet. But it's common. Once this virus is in the rearview mirror, that's when the inflation is going to start to come. And that's when we're going to see gold and silver prices really take a pop. So, you know, right now, would, uh, what I would call it is the accumulation time, you know, for, for uh, gold and silver. If you can get some of the real physical, don't buy into this uh, GLD and SLV stuff. You're wasting your time with that. They're never going to settle in the physical anymore for that. They're only going to settle in, in, in uh, dollars, you know. Anyway, thank you guys for listening to the show. Like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, give me a thumbs up. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.